negative on this news. Chair, we're ready whenever you want. Come on, Helen. That was a while, Helen. Karen, I'm sorry. How are you? I, I saw Helen and I called you, Helen, I saw the cup. I'll get the chair for you. Good? I'm good. What's the matter? Oh, no, we're going to just help you sit down. Oh! Oh, this, this is on. I know it's off. Okay, good morning and welcome to today's meeting of the Committee of Finance. I'm Council Member Daniel Drum and I'm the Chair of the Committee. We are joined by Council Members Dharma Diaz, Ayala, Rosenthal, Amphrey Samuel, Adams, Brooks Powers, Koslowitz, Powers, Grudenchik, Moya, Matteo, and Gibson. Today the Committee will be voting on four items, a transparency resolution, two Article 11 property tax exemptions, and one bid-related item. Let's begin with the transparency resolution. 
The transparency resolution sets forth the new designation and changes in the designation of certain organizations receiving local aging, anti-poverty, and youth discretionary funding and funding pursuant to certain initiatives in the budget. As with all transparency resolutions, council members will have to sign a disclosure form indicating whether or not a conflict exists with any of the groups on the attached list. If any member has a potential conflict of interest with any of the organizations listed, he or she has the opportunity to disclose the conflict at the time of their vote. As a reminder, please disclose any conflicts you may have with proposed subcontractors by organizations sponsored by discretionary funding. These disclosures must be made before the subcontractor can be approved. Disclosure forms must be completed and submitted prior to the vote on the transparency resolution and may be given or emailed to Chuck Davis. Next, we have the two land use items. The first is Beck Street in Councilmember Salamanca's district. This action will provide a full 40-year Article 11 property tax exemption to support the preservation of 83 units of affordable rental housing. The second is Mamayides in Councilmember Menchaca's district. The action would provide a partial 40-year Article 11 property tax exemption to support the preservation of 221 units of affordable rental housing. Each council member is supportive of the exemptions in their districts. Uh, council member Menchaca would like to speak about his, so I'm going to give him, is he here? No, okay. He's not here yet. If he comes, I'll give him the opportunity to speak on it. Finally, we have intro 2291, which would authorize the Madison 23rd Flatiron Chelsea bid to increase the amount it expands annually, extend its boundaries, and change the method of assessment upon which the district charge is based uh, in forth, uh, uh, set forth in the bid's amended district plan. The bid is requesting that the council approve the following changes to the district plan. Extending existing bid boundaries to the west to generally include more properties along 6th Avenue. Increasing the bid annual assessment from $3.2 million to $6 million. And three, changing the method of assessment on which the district uh, charge is based to create a formula based on use class. On May 27, 2021, this committee held a hearing on intro 2291 and we heard testimony in support of the proposed changes to the bids district plan. As required by law, the hearing closed without a vote and the 30-day period for property owners to file objections to the amended district plans with the office of the city clerk began. According to the city clerk, no property owners filed a valid objection to the expansion of the bid. Accordingly, the committee may now vote in favor of intro 2291 if we can answer the following four questions in the affirmative. Were all notices of hearings for all hearings required to be held, published and mailed as so required by law and otherwise sufficient? Two, does all real property within the district boundaries benefit from the expansion of the district except as otherwise provided by the law? Three, is all real property benefited by the district included within the district? And is the expansion of the district in the best interest of the public? If the committee and full council find in the affirmative on these four questions and the number of objections required to prevent the expansion of the bid are not filed, then the legislation can be adopted. Additionally, the committee and the full council must determine that it is in the public interest to authorize an increase in the maximum annual expenditure amount, that the relevant tax and debt limits will not be exceeded, and that the notice of increased proposed expenditure amount was properly published. For further details on the bid, please refer to the committee report on, city, on the City Planning Commission report and the bid's uh, proposed district plan. Representatives from SBS are here to testify to help us answer those questions on the bid item. SBS, please uh, begin your testimony, and we are now joined by Calvin T. Brown, uh, the Assistant Commissioner for the Department of Small Business Services. Thank you, and please uh, provide your testimony. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, good morning, Chair oh, Drum. Excuse me, we had to swear you in. Sorry. Do you affirm that your testimony will be truthful to the best of your knowledge, information, and belief? I do. Thank you. Um, good morning, Chair Drum and the members of the Finance Committee. I am Calvin T. Brown, the Assistant Commissioner for Neighborhood Development at the Department for Small Business Services. I'm joined here by my colleagues, um, the BID Program Director, Roxanne Early, and the BID Senior Program 
um, manager, Stephen Lee. Um, we thank you for the opportunity to report in person on the results of the objections filed with the city clerk against the proposed expansion for the Madison 23rd Flatiron Chelsea Business Improvement District, more commonly known as the Flatiron Partnership. As required by law, the bid expansion steering committee mailed the summary of the city council resolution to the following parties. To each owner of real property within the existing district and proposed expansion at the address shown at the latest city assessment roll, to such other persons as are registered with the city to receive tax billings concerning real property within the existing district and the proposed expansion, and to tenants of each building within existing district and the proposed expansion area. Additionally, the Flat Iron Partnership published a notice of the public hearing at least once in a local newspaper having general circulation in a district. This notice specified the time, place, and where the hearing will be held, stated the proposed increase to the maximum amount to, the, to be expended annually, and provided information on the changes to the assessment formula and the geography of the expansion area. Furthermore, SPS arranged for publication of a copy of the summary of the resolution at least once in the city record. We would like to report on the results of the objections filed with the city clerk against the proposed expansion of the bid. At the conclusion of the 30-day objection period, there were no objections filed with the city clerk. The Department of Small Business Services support the expansion of the bid. In our judgment, the Flat Iron Partnership will improve the quality of life and business conditions in the district and surrounding area. Um, at this time, um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And are there any questions um, or any of these items? Okay, I do want to give Councilmember Menchaca the opportunity to say a few words as well. And I'm asking everybody to come up to the microphones today to uh, speak uh, because we don't have mics on our desk necessarily for everyone. Thank you, Chair. Thank you to the committee and members in the council. I'm here to talk about uh, the Article 11 that is presented before the council today for approval. It is Mamonides Park Affordable Portfolio. The neighborhood of Sunset Park and Borough Park and really the southwest uh, part of Brooklyn is in need of many affordable units. This project presents a truly unique opportunity for 67 immediate homeless placements, 32 of which will be through health and hospital referrals via HRA. The developer is funding all the capital work, making significant improvements that will help current and future tenants of these buildings. Understanding that for the community board, they had some concerns. Community board 12 in Borough Park really laid them out. I asked the sponsor to commit in writing to provide quarterly updates to the board on upcoming vacancies that will be advertised on HPD's Housing Connect public portal in order to share those opportunities with the community, talk about the capital improvements, and really talk about anything that's happening within this project. This project is big. The sponsor expressed willingness to work, which is gonna make it a precedent-changing opportunity for us all to look at how we can build a bridge between these Article 11s and the community. In terms of concerns about the homeless facilities and the families that will be residing there, they are New Yorkers who are just down on their luck and so many of these days, we see the opportunities that these facilities will have on their life. That said, the developer will be working with CAMBA, a respected nonprofit that will provide services to the formerly homeless residents, including acclimating tenants to the new apartment, engaging with case managers, holding regular meetings with property management, et cetera. These are great components of this big project. CAMBA has also been working in the district, so I really like CAMBA and what they do. In securing my support, the sponsor agreed to work with the community board uh, and my office to build better relationships so that we can attack the skepticism head on. Uh, and I'm looking forward to doing that as soon as this thing is approved. Uh, and as we move forward, I just want to say thank you to HRA, to the finance team for negotiating this. This was not easy, but we have arrived. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And um, I'm now going to ask Billy Martin, the committee clerk, to call the finance roll and remind everyone you have to come up to the mics to, to vote.
Thank you. Good morning. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote, committee on finance. All items are coupled. Chair Drum. Vote aye. Kozlowitz. I vote aye. Gibson. I vote aye. Rosenthal. I vote aye. Grodenchik. Aye. Thank you. Adams. Aye. Ampri Samuel. I vote aye. Ayala. Ayala votes aye. Thank you. Moya. I vote aye. Powers. I vote aye. Diaz. I vote aye. Brooks Powers. I vote aye. Matteo. Voting aye on all except uh, 819, I vote no. Thank you. Just in case I missed somebody, uh, Van Bramer? Carnegie? Combo? Okay, by a vote of 13 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, all items have been adopted by the committee with land, pre-considered land use item 819 is adopted by the committee 12 in the affirmative, one in the negative, no abstentions. Okay, thank you very much, uh, committee clerk. And with that, this meeting is adjourned at 10.50 a.m. in the morning.